Hey, Southeast Texas new tonight. Judge Brannick will be back to work tomorrow. That is some great news. This after his wife tested negative for COVID-19. Absolutely, Dejanique. They had been self quarantining while they waited for her test results. So we know that they are very relieved tonight as are we. We wish Sherry the best as she continues to recover. Right now, we want to update you on three things to know as we track the local, state, and national response to this crisis. Number one, a stay at home order will not be coming to Southeast Texas, at least not right now. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. Number two, President Trump has approved a major disaster declaration for the state of Texas. This order increases the federal assistance available to our state to address the COVID-19 pandemic. And number three, a $2 trillion rescue deal reached in Congress. We know there's still some last minute back and forth on that. This is to help jumpstart the economy and help workers and business owners who've been impacted. And more changes are coming to Jefferson County to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Jefferson County Judge Jeff Brannick has asked county residents to limit activity that may put others at risk. 12 News reporter Victoria DeLeon is live in Beaumont to break this down. Well, Dejanique, the stay at home work safe initiative provides more guidance as to what is and isn't allowed from this from the public during this crisis. Now, the biggest takeaway here is that we all need to be following social distancing protocols and those emergency orders that are already in place. Now, you are allowed to leave your home to go grocery shopping, but are asked to limit the number of people shopping to one family member per household. You're also allowed to go to the pharmacy to pick up medications, go to medical appointments as long as you check in with your health care provider first. Now, the original order will remain in effect under this new initiative, meaning there should be no large gatherings with more than 10 people. Restaurants are drive through and takeout only. Bars, hair salons, and gay rooms, game rooms are all closed. Hardin County Judge Wayne McDaniel says the county judges are, asked, are trying to follow CDC guidelines to lessen the time that this pandemic impacts our community. As I've said for the past couple of days, it's just human nature for us to come up and shake hands and, and to uh, walk next to each other and what have you. We just got to get into a different routine where we're not doing that anymore. Again, this new initiative is only adding more guidance to the original orders. If you do go out, you're asked to maintain a distance of at least six feet from other people. And again, no large, no crowds with more than 10 people. Now, this stay at home initiative does not mean that roads are closed or that all businesses are shut down, but you are asked to stay at home if you can. Live in Beaumont, Victoria De Leon, 12 News. Really valuable insight. Victoria, thank you so much. Right now, we're hearing tough talk just across the state line from Louisiana's governor after issuing a stay at home order there. Governor John Bell Edwards saying, quote, we have not seen any flattening of the curve again in Louisiana. Those words as there have been 65 deaths and nearly 2000 cases statewide. Louisiana considering opening the Morrell Convention Center in New Orleans as a makeshift medical facility. Just how bad is it there? We'll take a look at these numbers as we break it down. In New York, one in every 1,000 New Yorkers is infected. In New Orleans, it's one in every 600. Definitely numbers we do not want to hear. Now, Patty, temperatures outside, they're rising, man. These are numbers we don't want to hear. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> not this early. <laughs> it's feeling like more like late May rather than uh, late March. Uh, we were about a month ahead of schedule. Clouds trying to come back in, uh, especially along the coastline. We'll see those uh, mix in and overnight. Otherwise, nothing on radar. We're at 81. It's 80 in orange. Port Arthur at 77, but still very warm. Well, hot up in the Jasper at 88 degrees. We expect temperatures to fall to 80 at 7 p.m. and down to near 70 by 11 p.m. And going to make a run for record high temperatures coming up Thursday and Friday. Uh, just a degree above what we saw as far as the records uh, tomorrow set back in 1928 and uh, 85 is what we're expecting. Uh, well, 86, I should say, coming up on Friday, which would beat the record of 85 set back in 2016. Coming up, we'll talk about when this warm spell will end and when we can welcome some rain back in the forecast in just a few minutes. Patrick, thank you. We know a lot of you have questions about that $2 trillion rescue bill still being worked out through Congress. So we're going to break it down for you. What we know tonight, like who qualifies, also how much you would qualify for, and if you need more assistance, how you can apply for unemployment. 
First, you've got to meet certain qualifications in order to be eligible for the money. It's based on your gross income for your 2018 taxes. If you earn more than 75,000 as indiv individuals, 1,000, or I should say 112,500 as the head of household, or 150,000 if you're married and filing jointly, the amount of the checks starts getting reduced. Those payments are expected to be $1,200 for individuals, $2,400 for those who are married and file their taxes jointly, and $500 per child. Okay, so if you lost your job due to COVID-19 and need additional help, you can always apply for unemployment. We have a step-by-step -step instruction process for that on our website. And new this evening, lending a helping hand. Members of Lamar State College Port Arthur's Allied Health Program, well, they met with Christus representatives to drop off donations of much needed medical supplies. An alert for you tonight, the Food Bank of Southeast Texas desperately needs volunteers. They are counting on us, Southeast Texas, to help get through this crisis together. If you want to help out your community during this rough time, the Food Bank and its operation still active. They could use financial donors who can offer support to make the purchase of food and other supplies possible. Just $1 can help make three meals for families in need. If you'd like to volunteer or donate, you see the website on your screen or simply go to our website. We've partnered with the Food Bank as we work through this. Now a Beaumont woman is on a mission to say thank you to a stranger for a random act of kindness. He paid for her and several others groceries at Walmart yesterday evening. 12 News reporter Pierce Kane has this story. During these difficult times, Sarah Wilcox wants people to know that there are still good people out there doing good things. Most people aren't even getting a paycheck right now. So for him to spend that much of his own money to help other people, I just thought was amazing. Like many others, Sarah Wilcox isn't able to work right now because of the coronavirus. So I'm at home with my kids, taking care of them and doing what we need to do and trying to homeschool, you know, everybody and kind of just get through this time and so I am currently without a paycheck. She says the coffee pot she's come to rely on started going out recently. For kids at home, a coffee pot is definitely an essential an essential item. Tuesday afternoon, Sarah and her daughter went to the Beaumont Walmart to buy a replacement, but they ended up coming back with so much more. As we're walking through into that little self-checkout area, I started hearing this guy yelling, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. The next thing she knew, the kind stranger was taking the coffee pot out of her hands. Says, I'm going to pay for this for you. Turns around, scans it on his little register that he's using, hands it back to me and says, God bless you. Have a great day. And he didn't stop there. She saw the man buy two more cartloads of groceries for others. Paid for for everybody's things. I don't know how many people he did this to before me. Sarah says the anonymous helper never even stopped to introduce himself, but he's someone she'll never forget. She hopes someday he'll know just how much the kind gesture meant to her and her family. I don't feel like I got to give him the proper thank you that he deserved and maybe he'll be watching and he'll see how grateful we were and just know that it it was a great thing he did. And if anyone knows the kind stranger who went above and beyond for Sarah and the others on Tuesday, she's asking for you to please let them know just how grateful she is. In Beaumont, Paris Kane, 12 News.